Local first is one of the biggest trends in 2024. Developers are following more local first repositories and companies like Expo are actively working on new solutions. Even the most upvoted feature request for Superbase is offline mode. So local first or also called offline first could be the application architecture of the future. And it has almost become like a movement in the mobile space. It's a bit like Web3 but this time with actual real world benefits as you will see in this video. And this trend is especially interesting for mobile app developers as it can dramatically improve the performance of your app. And local first and offline first is not just about making your app work when there's no internet connection. It's about delivering instant app experiences with the benefits of syncing in case of unreliable network conditions. So in this video I will show you what local first or offline first actually means, which options you currently have for implementation, how companies use offline first in the real world already and how PowerSync can make your life easier. Speaking of PowerSync, this video is sponsored by PowerSync. I would have probably done this video for free, but thanks to PowerSync, I could spend even more time on researching and putting together everything for this video. PowerSync is like a sync layer or middleware between your SQLite database on a client and your Postgres database on the backend. They enable offline first architecture for real time reactive apps and you can basically plug it into your existing database backend and app and reap the benefits of an offline first architecture without reinventing the wheel. PowerSync works great with Expo and Superbase and in general React Native and I will show you some more real life examples and code from PowerSync in the end, so stick around until then. So what is actually local first or offline first? People usually think about this as making your application work when there's a bad network condition, but it's so much more. For a basic definition, let's take this from the PowerSync block. In the offline first paradigm, app code works directly with a client-side embedded database, which automatically syncs with a backend database in the background. But more importantly to me, your app feels really instant and snappy. When you press that save button, you get an instant feedback and you're not waiting for this little loading spinner. And you're actually using this already in many applications. Most prominent probably Figma in the browser, which uses SQLite and the WASM support to make the experience of Figma really, really instant. So let's talk about why local first is so important. It's 2024 and users expect your app to be better every year and please loading spinners are so 2015, right? And yes, in some cases your application needs an active connection if you want to track the stock prices or whatnot, but many apps can benefit from this architecture. So let's go through a few main points that you can benefit from. First of all, state management. It's always painful, caching, revalidation, invalidation, whatever you have to do, you have to check your server state and make sure everything works with the app. With local first, you have a single point of truth, which is your local SQLite database. You display it and it just syncs in the background. Loading times. You can display and load your app a whole lot faster if you start with a local first approach where you first take the local data and then reload everything new in the background. And same is true for updates. As I said before, if you click that save button, you can just give an instant feedback of, okay, it's safe. It's saved locally to the SQLite database and in the background, it will upload to whatever background you have. But there are even benefits to collaboration. This is funny enough because a collaboration usually you think of having an active connection and yes that is true but the thing is that local first is actually built for this pattern of syncing stuff in the background and making it work. So instead of building your own real-time WebSocket whatever logic for collaboration and syncing with local first approach you kind of have that built in already with the architecture. On top of that you have the whole availability aspect of course. If your app crashes, the data is not lost. Usually all transactions will be stored locally and when the app recovers, you can still recover these transactions. And same is true for if your backend goes down. You can't save anything in your application in a regular app, but with a local first approach, every transaction and every change you made is persisted locally. And once the backend comes back, it will be synced to the cloud. But there are even benefits for your backend, which is funny because this is about local first. But if you think about it, you're making less calls to your API, you need less API complexity and you will also have less load on your server, which means you can probably decrease your server cost by using a local first app architecture. So all of this sounds probably very theoretical to you and yes, I agree. So let's take a look at a few examples. There's an application called Trash Blitz, which helps people to track the trash they pick up in national parks. And there's a case study with these pictures and you can just 
Imagine how it helps to go through the Yosemite Park, track the trash and not rely on a network connection because most likely you won't have one. In terms of collaboration, there's an app called Synapse which it helps with scheduling for film production, funny enough, uh, and because those are also happening in locations where you usually don't really have a reliable network condition but you still need to have a lot of collaboration and this local first architecture enables applications like these. Speaking of making applications snappy, there's also an Call, app called Habit Kit, which I've been following before, which is about tracking your habits. And as a bonus for an upgrade of that app, the developer now wants to introduce Local First, which will make uh, the backup of your data a lot faster. Another app is called Jetpack, which is used in the travel space for booking and keeping your documents. And if you travel, you want to have access to your documents all the time. So with Jetpack, you have your application and data always locally available and also cross-platform across all the devices and synced. And there are of course many more areas. You can think of agricultural worker, every service worker that is in the field submitting reports or updates or incidents in areas where there's a spotty connection. But also in terms of, for example, a point of sales application where you need instant feedback for a user coming in and making an order and then having that order behind there in the kitchen where probably the network isn't that great. In all of these cases, Offline First enables these apps to work better for the user. And at the same time, it's easier to implement for the developers because Local First and Offline First give you the right paradigm to set up the architecture in the best possible way. Okay, so probably all of this sounds great and you wanna implement Local First, but developers did not implement this because it's simply painful to set up the whole syncing logic. Otherwise, we would probably all have used this pattern before. So what are our options in 2024 that we can use to implement a local first app architecture? If you're now screaming Firebase from the rooftops because they have an offline mode, let me tell you that Firebase is actually not really following the local first paradigm. They will still try to make a call to their cloud service first before falling back to your local offline data. So it's not really in the fashion of local first. One of the most prominent solutions is probably RxDB, which is a local database for JavaScript applications, but you already read this, it is a quite generic solution. Um, it is not really focused on React Native, although it works, and the focus is only on working offline, but there's nothing really about the syncing of your data to your own backend. WatermelonDB is a super popular package in the React Native world. It is a reactive asynchronous database for powerful React Native apps, uh, also for React, and is built with the goal of just best performance for complex applications. And again, this is great for offline apps, it's really fast, it adds observables, but you have to implement your own sync engine for your backend and front end, so it's becoming quite uh, complicated to do all of this. Then there's Replicash, probably a smaller solution, which is an in-browser persistent key value store, which was made for web apps. So you already see, it's probably not the best for React Native, um, it has really memory fast writes and, and synced in the background and it's made for instant UIs and collaboration, I think. It's an interesting solution, but it's more like a niche thing. Uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot of stars on GitHub yet, but I will keep an eye on this. Then there's of course PowerSync, which I mentioned as the sponsor of this video. So PowerSync is like a sync layer between your SQLite database and the Postgres database on the server. Um, it enables an offline first architecture, just like the other packages we mentioned, and it has SDKs for React Native, also Flutter if you're interested in that, and the web. And it really, really makes it easy to set up local first in your application, especially without messing up the whole architecture of the rest of your system. And this is really one of the important things about PowerSync, because it gives the developer basically full control over how writes are made to Postgres, so uh, they can retain existing business logic, validation, authorization, or, or server-side integrations. You can get started for free, which is currently a hosted plan, and they do have planned an open source self-hosted plan for later this year, as I have heard. And I'll show you more about PowerSync in a second, but there's one more package that we should mention. So the other service that is always mentioned when it comes to local first is Electric SQL. Um, on the first look, it is actually pretty much exactly the same as PowerSync. It is a drop-in solution for uh, reactive local first applications with Postgres. 
but the problem here is that this is a lot more entangled with your database. So that was also an interesting comment here on GitHub. And it said that yes, yeah, another solution, PowerSync, which is a middleware between SQLite and Postgres, while electrically basically takes over complete control, uh, control of your Postgres database, PowerSync is just a middleware. There's a huge difference between these two. As far as I know, Electric is also currently in alpha and not recommended for production. So I will keep an eye on it and it is 100% open source. So let's talk a bit more about PowerSync and then also see a code demo of this. So you can imagine this as having the PowerSync SDK installed in your React Native application. It is then using the SQLite database on your device and in the background it is syncing with the hosted version of PowerSync and from there it connects to your database. The cool thing is that this also comes with a pre-built functionality for one of my favorite backends which is Superbase. As I said in the beginning, the most requested feature is offline mode for Superbase and PowerSync is actively offering a solution for this and I can tell you a pretty good one. The philosophy here is that the goal of PowerSync is to solve the hard problems of keeping data in sync, which is definitely the problem, but then get out of the way. And that's what I really like about it. They really want to make developer life easier. It's their vision that an offline first architecture should be actually easier to develop and I wish that this becomes a truth in the future. There are some pretty cool pictures here on the PowerSync documentation about how the data flows in terms of reading your data or writing your data. As I mentioned before, you have your app with the PowerSync SDK, which is always using the local SQLite database and your app will always read from there. And the PowerSync will keep, or the PowerSync service will then keep your data in sync by using specific sync rules that we're gonna see in a second. Also, it's interesting to know for the write case is that your writes are first of all persisted locally into like an uploaded clue in the uh, uploaded queue. And of course that upload queue is also persisted in the local SQLite database so you basically never lose any kind of transaction and from that upload queue they will be directly written to your existing backend or API so PowerSync is really not messing up with that as you can see PowerSync is down here the service it's not messing with the flow of data up here all right so let's dive one step deeper and look into an actual react native code base that is using PowerSync for the sync of the data okay so here's an example from PowerSync it is a to-do list app I can now go into one of these lists and then add new items um, it's kind of hard to correctly demonstrate this behavior with offline mode because offline for the simulator is not really working but you see that when I add something in here it is instantly in the app and in the background it is also synced to Superbase at the same time. The way to set up something like this is to first of all have your database ready your backend Postgres in this case I was using Superbase I then created a new project here in the PowerSync dashboard and I defined some sync rules. So these are the rules that verify how your data is synced from the back end back to your device. Once you got that part set up, you would configure your React Native application in the usual way with Superbase, but now also specify a PowerSync URL that points to the hosted uh, version of what we just did before. And additionally, you would define an app schema that resembles how your SQL database looks. So we have an app schema here for my to-dos table and for my list table and how they are working together. Once you got all of that set up, you would use it in a tiny bit different way as you would now directly use SQL statements here in your application and not, for example, use the Superbase SDK as these reads, writes or updates are done to the local SQLite database through the PowerSync SDK. And yes, I completely agree. This raw SQL statement in our code does look a bit scary to me at least, but as I heard, ORM integration is on the roadmap for PowerSync. So in the future, this will look a lot better. If you would like to see a full tutorial about making React Native work with PowerSync and Superbase, please drop a comment below and I will make it a reality in the next time. So let's conclude. Local first and offline first are no pipe dreams anymore and not just pure concepts for a perfect world. They are reality and 2024 will be a big step forward to enable developers to use this new architecture in a more easy fashion. If you want more than just making your app work offline, if you want instant app experiences and the best possible user experience, you definitely need to opt into local first and you should certainly keep an eye on this space. I also hope that this video helps the like 50% that responded in the state of React Native survey that they have never heard about local first and hopefully next year it will be different. And also special thanks again to PowerSync for making this video happen. Check out PowerSync 
crossing you can get started for free and i think it's one of the best ways and easiest ways to drop in and enable local first in your react native applications right now and of course let me know in the comments if you want to see a full tutorial on building a react native offline first or local first application and i will make it a reality stay subscribed and i will catch you in the next one and until then happy coding simon